what's causing me to feel this energy of uh, a big change, a massive change, but a change that's going to take a, a good amount of time and I'm hearing strong conscious focus and consistency, it's the wheel of fortune. And for some of you, I, I heard that this change represents, I, what I'm hearing is great pain, changing or, 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 or shifting your way out of a sense of great pain. Hello everyone and welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So this is going to be your collective tarot reading for your day, for your moment, for whenever this resonates with you. Yeah, please keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, this is a timeless reading. This does not have to resonate at any specific time. You could watch it today and it could resonate. You could watch it next week. You could watch it two months from now and it may still resonate for you. Just keep that in mind. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Please go ahead and like, share, and subscribe. And as always, guys, definitely let me know how this resonates with you in the comments section back down below. This is Divine Conversation, so the floor is open for a conversation. Let's talk about it, yeah? All right, kids, so we're just going to get straight into this here, um, and we are going to see what we have for the collective for today's session. Yeah, here we go. Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages in terms of the situations, situationships, places, love, uh, romances, relationships, and circumstances in which we all need it the most. So very much spirit. All right, guys, five shuffles here. One, two, collective energy reading. This is three, collective tarot reading. What do we have for the collective today, spirit? This is four. And this is five. All righty, kids. So, what do we have going on? What message do we have for the collective today? Oof. Okay. This is quite a bit. <clears throat> uh, the first thing that is catching my attention. Um, what seems to be the central focus for this message or for the collective at this moment is a big change in perspective. Well, mm, not a change, not necessarily a change in perspective, but a change in your life. Um, and I'm getting a big, massive change in your life that is actually going to take a good amount of time. And you just need to follow through and persevere with it. The beautiful thing about it, you guys, is that you are in the driver's seat. You are in the master manifester seat. We do have the magician at the bottom of the deck. And what's causing me to feel um, this energy of uh, a big change, a massive change, but a change that's going to take a, a good amount of time and I'm hearing strong conscious focus and consistency, it's the wheel of fortune. And for some of you, I, I, I heard that this message is, uh, or this change represents, um, I, I, what I'm hearing is great pain, changing or, 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 or shifting your way out of a sense of great pain, okay? Um, I feel like you're trying to bring much greater balance into your life. You have temperance, you have that with the five of swords, you have that with the page of pentacles, and also the two of swords. These are all cards that fell out face down. There's one card that fell out, I'm sorry, face up. There's one last card that fell out face down. It is the four of pentacles. To be quite honest with you guys, I feel like you're releasing. I feel like you're releasing and you're walking away 
from a battle, okay? We do have the Five of Swords here, and the Five of Swords is often an energy of self-sabotage or lose-lose situation, a very difficult situation here for yourself. Um, but what I'm getting with this great change, I'm hearing great change for you, and you are manifesting this great change in your life. And what is happening here is you've been in this energy of the Four of Pentacles for a long time. The Four of Pentacles is an energy of holding on to something for dear life, not necessarily wanting it to change. What I am feeling for the collective, or at least for this message right now, is you've been in a position for a while in which you were trying to, for lack of a better term, what I heard was you were trying to preserve the status quo. Now we don't have the Hierophant here, so it's not that type of energy, but I guess the status quo the status quo for your life. There has been something in your life that, you know, worked for a while or you were a part of for a while or it fit into your life for a while. It was resonant. It was relevant to your life for maybe a good amount of time or even an extended amount of time. OK, um, but that has been changing just like anything. Everything is going to change eventually. And there have been energies of that needing to change. And that's been coming through for some time with the Wheel of Fortune here. I'm definitely seeing what the Wheel of Fortune is representing is you've been in this certain state or in this certain relationship, this certain environment, this certain job, this certain circumstance, this certain living situation, whatever this represents for you. You were in a certain state in your life. And there was a sort of foundation there. Um, things started to get a little bit rocky eventually. The Wheel of Fortune energy started to creep up on you, okay? And it was maybe, it, at first you may have looked at it like, oh, well, you know, that's life, right? I just gotta, you know, we just gotta hunker down, hold on, we'll be okay. But as life went on or as time went on, more and more of this Wheel of Fortune energy started to creep into the situation. And this Wheel of Fortune energy is representing a, a a necessary change is what I'm hearing, an involvement. Uh, you know, you could, your life is evolving or your life is shifting and changing. For the better, yes, it's bringing new into your life, but the more this Wheel of Fortune energy, this necessary change, this big change on a spiritual level even, because this is, over, this is um, Major Arcana, the more this came through, this more, the more you started to uh, feel through this or get th work through this energy and it was pushing you to make a change in your life the more and more you held on because on the surface or at least from your point of view at that time it didn't need to change it worked it was the right i mean it had been working for so long why do we have to change now and then that's when the energy shifted into this five of swords situation because it felt like it feels like you were you started going through this this phase of like really digging your heels in while the universe is coming forward to you saying, no, we've got to change this. We've got to evolve. We've got to move. We've got to grow. We've got to level up here. This is a part of your life path. Ultimately, this is a part of the development of your soul, the development of your consciousness. Okay. And so now, okay. Okay. Well, actually this, yes, this two of swords does go here. So you have the four of pentacles, the five of swords and the two of swords. There was a level of denial that was coming through for you here. You didn't want to make a change. You didn't want it to happen. You didn't, you didn't necessarily want to go with the flow. There was a level of denial here, but then ultimately what I'm feeling is that this five of swords energy just became too much eventually. And that's the beauty that's the beauty of the universe. That's the trickery of the universe here. I don't necessarily, I mean, it's not even, the, the universe isn't trying to trick us, but the universe knows exactly who we are and it has a very good idea of how we're going to react to things. And if the universe wants something to happen, it's going to make it happen. And it's going to take you with it, kicking and screaming, right? But at, at, at some point here in your journey or in this situation, you started to recognize that it was easier for you to let go of this and allow this change to, ha to happen than to stay here and fight for this because it was just becoming more and more of a struggle, more and more of a battle. It was, it was becoming more and more of an element of sabotage, I guess, self-sabotage. And at this point now, it, feel, it feels like you're just, you, you've finally surrendered. There's definitely an energy of surrendering to the universe here. You're surrendering to this and allowing this change to happen. And not only allowing this change to happen, but stepping in the manifester, into your manifester mode, your master manifester mode. And that's exactly 
what the universe wanted with this Wheel of Fortune. That's why it was creeping up on you, slowly pushing at you, nudging at you, poking you, saying, hey, we gotta make a change here. And, and lining all kinds of situations up for you to step into this driver's, or into this master manifestor seat, okay? With this, you have the Page of Pentacles and Temperance. What I do wanna say for the collective here moving forward is whatever change that is being made for you here, it's in service of greater balance, greater harmony for yourself. It's, uh, it, 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 for a lot of you who are of this mindset, it is bringing a greater balance between your physical self and your spiritual self. And what I feel here is there were certain physical elements to your life that, again, status quo energy that is changing that you didn't necessarily want to let go of. It was very material, but whatever happened, however the Wheel of Fortune came through and nudged you into this new reality or into this new energetic state where you're, you're, you're manifesting something new in your life, um, it, it, it was taking certain, it was, it was taking certain elements of the physical reality and kind of knocking it out one by one until you got to a point where it's like, okay, well, I have to step in and start manifesting something new. But the other thing that I'm getting with this uh, magician energy and you being in this master manifester energy is that there's a lot more trust and faith in the universe and yourself now. Okay. And whatever it is you're manifesting here, you're manifesting something that's much more, I heard deeply, deeply reciprocal. Okay. And you know, it's funny because I'm kind of resonating with this too, because I'm, I'm going through a certain shift in my life that has me in this master manifester mode or has me in this manifester mode where I'm looking to manifest a situation that is way more reciprocal, may, way more balanced and way, harmo way more harmonious. And for me, this looks like, how do I do my work? How do I be here as a reader and a channeler for people and work, not work like crazy amount of hours for a, a little bit of payoff? In return you know obviously that's gonna take 11 11 on the counter that's gonna take some time overall to really make the make the real shift but as long as we're like I said with this wheel of fortune here but as long as we're in this driver's seat as long as we are flowing and working with the universe things are gonna be okay all right um, I want to clarify some things here and the first thing I want to clarify is this five of swords energy yeah we're gonna get we're gonna we're using the golden art nouveau that's this deck here and then we're right now we're gonna be using the uh after tarot for clarification yeah three shuffles one two and three all righty so this five of swords, and keep in mind, guys, this, this reading really can resonate at any time for you, okay? This is a general, timeless, collective reading, yeah? So just whenever you find it and it resonates for you, even if it doesn't resonate with you at the moment, but you still feel like there's something, this is relevant somehow, put a pin in it, save it to your watch later playlist, and come back when you feel ready, because it'll most likely really resonate for you at that time, yeah? Let's talk about this five of swords here. What's the five of swords for the collective? What is this five of swords representing the spirit? The Eight of Cups. Not wanting to leave the past behind, you know? And it's interesting because this is the after Tarot, right? So this is, a depict, this deck depicts the, the Tarot after the initial, the main, you know, Rider Waite depiction. And we see here there's someone walking away in the background, but then this, this woman here is standing there staring at this cup. That's what I feel like this has been for you here. That person in the background is the universe saying, is, is moving forward saying, let's go, we gotta move forward. And you're standing there looking at these cups like, but wait, I don't wanna leave this behind. This worked for so long, why does it have to change now? Anything else for the, five of, uh, for the Eight of Cups, clarifying the Five of Swords? Seven of Pentacles, okay. So what actually, ooh, Seven of Swords is at the bottom of the deck now too. So what actually got you to move forward here, to let this stuff go and walk away, was a realization that whatever it is you've been trying to preserve, Seven of Pentacles, has been deceptive in some way or has not been, has been cheating you in some way. Even if this is just energetically, monetarily, uh, business-wise or whatnot, even if this is a relationship, 
uh, uh, something has been cheating you here. Something has been deceptive, and it could even just be your you being deceptive towards yourself. Five of Swords, there's that self-sabotaging energy, but thinking that it, should, it didn't need to end. But look, right underneath the Seven of Swords, under that is the Ten of Swords. Something needed to end here, okay? It was time, it literally was just time to move on. And it doesn't even have to be a bad thing. And, you know, this Four of Pentacles, Two of Swords can represent a bit of a comfort zone energy. Uh, very much like the Nine of Cups can represent. You know, the Nine of Cups is a good thing. You know, it's wish fulfillment, sure. But it also represents a bit of a comfort zone. You know, what is emotional, what is f familiar to you, what allows you to just sink into it and just like lose your, lose your sense of self or lose your sense of time. There's no real, there's no real need to be engaged with it because it's just there. It's just happened. You know, it's a, it's a state of intoxication sometimes even too, okay? This is a comfort zone. But you needed to move out of it because something, the Seven of Pentacles to me is like sometimes, you know, Einstein's defin of, his definition of insanity. Uh, expecting some, or uh, doing something one way over and over again, but expecting a different result. Also, what I, so, so there was, there's a process that needed to change here. I guess it, I'm not, I'm not saying it was bad, but also at the same time, you guys, it seems what this Seven of Pentacles is always also saying here is that you received the harvest that you needed. You got what you needed from the situation. There was no longer a reason to stay here. It's time to move on to the next. It's time to move on to something new. And that's the thing about the universe or just existence. Everything is going to change. The one constant in our lives, in our realities, is that everything eventually is going to change sometime. That is the one thing you can count on in this reality. Change. Okay? So let's talk about this. The Wheel of Fortune, you have Temperance here, and you have the Page of Pentacles. The Temperance here is also representing p potentially creating something new, starting a new job, starting a new business, a new career, or a new creative project or something. I am getting that from Temperance. Page of Pentacles is that next reality, is that level up to the next phase in your life where, you know, you're feeling a little green, you gotta wear your, your training wheels a little bit, but it's still... It's still brand new. You still have all the experience that you that you had from the past that you're taking that with you. Yes, this is a fresh start, but it's not like you're starting from scratch. Let's talk about the Wheel of Fortune then. Can you clarify the Wheel of Fortune for us, please, Spirit? What is this Wheel of Fortune for the collective? Yeah, okay, and this is part of the reason why it was a little bit... Um, difficult for you to actually get on the bandwagon and start moving forward. Okay, you have the high priestess here. There's a lot of known unknown in this situation. For some of you, this feels like uh, an initiation. You've recently gone through an initiation, or maybe you're going through this now, but I, what I feel is you've, you've gone through an initiation in which now you're at a place where you really can put a lot of your, a lot more of your trust and uh, your faith, even though we don't have the star here, but um, a lot of your trust and your faith because there's a in the universe because there is a lot of mystery There's a lot of unknown here. Okay, you have the high priestess with the three of swords Interesting And then the five of wands is at the bottom of the deck, but then you do have the ace of wands to the knight of pentacles. All right um, So literally what this is saying here the high priestess is the, the high priestess or the universe, right? The high, the, the, in, my, in my opinion, as a reader, the high priestess represents, you know, the higher perspective of the universe, all of the mystery and the unknown that's outside of our three-dimensional reality, which is represented by her counterpart, the Hierophant, right? So when you get to the high priestess, you're really being initiated. You're being initiated into... Um, the mysteries or the unknown elements of the universe here. There's a lot of mystery. There's a lot of unknown. There could be a lot of chaos from our point of view on this three-dimensional reality, but it's it, there's so much higher intelligence involved here that we can't even begin to fathom it in this conscious three-dimensional mindset, right? The high priestess or the higher realms, the higher aspects of the universe are coming forward and saying, you want, you want to get out of this heartbreak, right? You want to get out of this destructive, toxic situation, right? You want to get out of this situation that no longer serves you, right? Well, then you're going to need to trust me and allow this change to happen. Okay? That's not easy. But again, I feel like 
you're in a place right now where you can you can have this rapport with the universe you can have this conversation with the universe and be like all right universe you know what you're right i don't want to be here any longer i've learned what it is that i need to learn or i've received the harvest that i need to harvest that i that i wanted or is necessary or all that i could get from this situation so yeah it's time for me to move forward fine last thing i want to clarify then is the page of pentacles with temperance what is the Page of Pentacles with Temperance for the Collective? Please do. Take that one, okay? Good. Excellent, 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 excellent. So even though you're moving forward here to something new, you are creating this new situation or this new version of yourself or this new version of your reality from the place that you left off from where you're, you're leaving from now, right? So you have the Seven of Pentacles here clarifying something earlier in the reading. The Seven of Pentacles is representing that moment where you recognize or you realize that your harvest has been received you're done, you're, you've done what you need to do now, and now you get to move forward. Like say, say um, in terms of craftsmanship, right? Because we go from the seven to the eight of pentacles. You got all of your materials. You got all your raw materials here. You got all your experience, your will, your wisdom. You know how, you read through the instructions. You know how to move forward with what it is that you're crafting and you have all of your raw materials. Now it's time to start crafting. We move from the seven of pentacles to the eight of pentacles. That's what the temperance and the page of pentacles is clarifying here for you. Yeah. One last card with this, the six of pentacles. Whatever it is you're creating here, whatever new reality you're moving forward towards, again, you are physic you are specifically crafting this for yourself, and it is from a place of greater reciprocity, greater balance between the elements of give and take. I love that, you guys. All right, I'm going to close this out. We're going to get you, we are going to get you some closing oracle guidance here from the Crystal Mandala deck. Yes? All righty, kids. Let's close this out for you. Five shuffles. One. Two. Three. Oop. Three. Four. And five. All right, kids. Closing Oracle message. Here we go. Ooh, wow. There it is. Okay. We have two cards. You have card number four, Archangel Melchizedek and Selenite, Divine Perfection. And then you also have card number 33, Ascended Master Helios and Citrine, Your Time to Shine. I actually want to read your time. I'm going to read both of these, but I want to read Your Time to Shine first. Because that actually came out first. Um, Divine Perfection was underneath that, but yeah, so let's do it this way. We bring you the blessing of your time to shine. On the divine path, you gain empowerment through surrender and alignment with divine consciousness greater than your own. High priestess energy, right? As you choose to surrender into higher consciousness through prayer and intention, you are held in a field of divine protection. You also gain strength, wisdom, and understanding. You release fear and gain love's power. You become increasingly radiant, discovering more of your own divine identity. At some point on your path, whilst this is always happening for you on the inner planes, you will be ready to perform a similar function on the outer planes or in the world of forms. This is when you will be asked to bravely shine your light to help those in need, perhaps lost or in darkness of some sort in the physical world. That's beautiful. That's really, really beautiful. And last, lastly, we have card number four, Divine Perfection. 
This is definitely, see, this is definitely a situation, you guys, in which the universe is asking you to trust us because we have a, a higher point of view in terms of what is necessary for your life, what your soul needs. Even this process of manifesting something new here, right? Even though, yes, you're in the driver's seat, you have, you're doing your part to manifest this, or at least you still need to do your part to manifest this. But there's a heavy deal of higher awareness or trust in the universe, in source, God, source, creator, and all that stuff that, that allows you this, the, the feelings of safety to really move forward and say, okay, I know this is divine perfection, all right? This is divine timing. Even though I can't consciously understand exactly how this is going to work out or why things need to change in this way right now, I know divine perfection is at hand. Divine timing is at hand. This is, this is needed. This is necessary for me in my life. And it definitely feels like you guys, especially with temperance here, temperance on the page of pens. Okay, Jinx, I'm almost done. Can you chill? Thanks. Um, with temperance and the page of pentacles, it's that temperance energy that's helping me feel like you're a little more balanced and trustworthy of the universe and even of your divine ability at this point to really take on this next phase and be like, all right, let's do this universe. You and me, we got this, right? Okay. Finally, we have divine perfection. We bring you the gift of divine perfection. As you receive our gift, you will feel a wave of great peace move through your heart and mind. You will know you are exactly as you were divinely designed to be, that your life is proceeding in perfect timing and that all is well. If there has been a matter causing you concern, allow us to bless that situation with the peaceful grace of the divine now. You shall receive the perfect resolution of that matter in accordance with unconditional love. There is no need to judge yourself for any decision or choice you have ever made. Forgive yourself and others now. There are so many blessings for you to receive and no need for you to hold on to anything out of fear, shame, guilt, or regret. Free yourself as you surrender into realization of divine perfection. I'm going to leave it there. There you have it, guys. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. Again, please make sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment. I love to hear from you guys. Let's really have a conversation about it. This is a community where we can talk to each other. We are very loving and unconditionally loving and committed to serving each other and serving the rest of the community and the rest of, of society and humanity. So if you have something that you want to say, express yourself. This is a safe space, yeah? I love you all so very much. I hope you have a fantastic day and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Bye. <laughs>